Good morning, everyone. I wanted to see if it was starting over. I started to, I started last night to record this, and for whatever reason, Bandit came over here, and he would not... I had to hold him, and he snuggled, and he snuggled, and I'm trying to show stuff. I'm going like this, and it wasn't working. <laughs> so... When I got to the point where I had to find something else to show and I couldn't reach it, I stopped. So we went in the living room and sat in the recliner and he snuggled for, shoot, an hour at least. And then he finally got up and went on the couch and he sprawled out. So by that time, I was tired and so I didn't finish it. So good morning to you all and... Uh, I got a snippy nose. I'm sorry. And uh, I hope you're having a good day. It's early still. I mean, it's morning. But uh, I have lots to do. I have been working on. I've mailed out many, many packages. And uh, I have this last, for my last sale, I have about half of it packed. And the other half I'll finish this morning. And then I will send out the invoices. And so tomorrow... I will be having my sale at 6 o'clock Eastern Time. Um, I hope you will join me. And um, I have a cleaning girl now. I say girl because she's 22. And she's a tall, tall girl. She's six foot. So she can do my cabinets and do stuff way up high. That I can't even reach on a hardly on a ladder. She's a lovely kid, and uh, we have a great conversation. And I, when I cleaned houses, you know, ninety percent of the time the people weren't there, and they sure weren't talking to me. But she likes to talk to me, and uh, so I might just be sitting here talking while she's cleaning, and she's okay with that. So. Um, yeah, she's a great kid. I, I really love her. So she will be here Saturday, and hopefully we can knock a bunch of stuff out. We are, She's been helping me organize things and stuff like that, too. So uh, that's very helpful. And she says, I can't wait to get everything organized and get the house clean, she said, because then we're going to start renovating. And I said, <laughs> Eh, I did laugh, and then I said, "Goodness, you're you're a girl after my own heart." That's what I've been wanting to do. I said, "So, uh, she's going to help me paint the cabinets. Since we've only ever got one painted, we're going to paint the rest, and uh, just all kinds of good stuff." So, I love this kid. Uh, when something happens and it it's such a good thing. It it's hard to believe it happened. Uh, we always say it's a God thing, or on TV on the Hallmark Channel they call it a God wink. But she's a God thing. It, it, her, me and her connecting, or her and I connecting, is a God thing. Um, I went to Care Incorporated, and uh, I paid only for one month. I had there was like three people like was interested in, I picked her first. Well, yes, I did pick her first. And uh, so I don't have to pay again because I've found my girl. So much for that. Uh, now I'll move along to my health. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not... I have not a lot of good news. The only good news I have about my health is my blood pressure has actually came down. So they lowered my medicine. She said, actually, I didn't need it. But I'm sure at some point I would, you know, so she's got me on a real low dose. Um, I cannot get my hip done until I lose weight. He said it causes, you know, there's a, much bigger chance of getting infection if I'm overweight. My BMI has to be a certain level. Uh, he did not 
or give me any any clues as to how to go about losing my weight. But when I went to my regular general practitioner doctor, I have a nurse practitioner, uh, the next day I told her, you know, we talked about all my health issues, and I told her about that, and she said, uh, was I opposed to taking something to help lose weight? And I said, no, not at all. So she's put me on Ozempic, which I will take today for the first time. Now, Ron's on it. I haven't seen him lose any weight, but uh, anyway, I, I'm hoping. You have to have that my mindset that you're going to, you know, lose weight. So, um, and I, of course, I know what to watch and what not to eat. And I just know that common sense and 900 commercials and <laughs> millions of things I've read. So, I, I mean, I know what to do. So if I know what to do and I take the Ozempic, I'm hoping I lose some weight. Um, let's see what else was interesting about that. Then yesterday... Um, somebody's calling me. I don't know who. Yesterday, um, I went and I was talking to my pastor. And we had a long conversation. And uh, she said that um, she suggested that I join the Y. And did water aerobics. You know, somebody, her friend of hers did that and lost a ton of weight. And I said, well, it just so happens I'm already a member. So I said, Ron and I are going to have to, uh, we're both members. So we're going to have to start going over there. If for another reason, it'll be something to do. It's free. We're, we don't have to pay for it. So, yeah. So I'm going to be doing that as well. So. Hopefully, I'll, I'll lose some of my double chin. It'll just be saggy instead of uh, fat. Uh, all right, they left a message. Okay. So, uh, other than that, that's all that's new with that. Uh, I will let Ron at our sale or whatever, if he wants to discuss anything that he has found for his, about his health. Um, other than that, we're, we're good. We have a bunch of tests we have to take. And I'm going to get some uh, cortisone shots in both of my hips to buy time until I can get the surgery. So hopefully that'll work. So, I'm just going to start with what's in front of me, uh, and I'm going to work my way around. I've got stuff here, up on the floor, here, here, all over. Stuff that I already showed last night that i got to show again. Yep, it's, it's a crazy world here. So, I hope you will like something that you see, and uh, I think I'll do a video tomorrow just to kind of clue you in as to what will be in the sale. So, let's get started, okay? I'll start with this because it's tiny and it's little. It's a little and it's satin. Oh, it's got a little... It's got a little ding in, which I didn't... It's got a little ding and a crack. I didn't know that. Little tiny vase. Made in Japan. Well, I'm bummed about that. I didn't see that. My my uh, pile of stuff that is got boo-boos that we're going to have our boo-boo sale pretty soon are uh, stacking up. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Um, I had the these are all. This is not messed up. This little teeny tiny uh, open sugar bowl, I guess. Uh, 
I don't know if it was like a children's set or I don't really know what it was. But it's just kind of cute. Little amber thing you could just stick on a little uh, tear tray or something. That's why little things are so cute to have a good collection of them to change out on your tear tray. If you have one, which I'm going to show you guys how to make one. At least one kind. Uh, not pretty soon. They're not that hard to make at all, really. And then I have this, which there's a piece that's broken, and I don't know where it's went to now. Uh, figure. I was going to glue it back on. But it's this girl, and she's holding this large, it looks like a, uh, I don't know what kind of flower it is. But this is, if you look at her face, after a while you can kind of tell this country's uh, um, what do you want to say? Style. Style of painting. It is made in Italy. And there is just the way they do things, you can tell quite often that it's Italy. So we got her. I have a little guy. He is a black Americana. Or it's a, a girl, I think. And she's washing clothes in a oaken bucket, looks like. I thought that was kind of cute. And let's see here. I have this little pixie, and it is made in occupied Japan. The painting on it is weird. It looks like somebody home painted it. And it's got a little piece of its collar missing. Um, but it's cute. Uh, this would be so cute, like, for St. Patrick's Day, Christmas, you know. I think it would be. Okay, now, uh, here's the piece I was looking for. I'll just put it back. Um, I have this little uh, pottery mixing bowl, and it's in pretty nice shape. Um, let's see, there's one little chippo here, like right here, but it's still very usable. There's no cracks or anything where it's not marked. But if you didn't want to use it as a mixing bowl, it would be really cute to put, you know, on a shelf or something with some vintage spoons and stuff in it. So uh I think that's cool anyway. I, I love these kinds of bowls, which you will see. I have a couple more I think. And while I'm bending down, I will pick this one up. I found this gorgeous dragonware base. Look at this. It's got the peach color on the inside. Um, and it's in, as far as I can tell, perfect condition. I didn't find any problems with it whatsoever. But it's like the moriage, or however you say that, it's all... You know, stuck. It's you can feel it. It's raised, and I love this because it looks like shadows. I just, I, first of all, I just love dragonware, but this one is just so gorgeous, and it is marked on the bottom that was made in Japan, uh, hand painted Japan. So, very lovely. Very, very lovely. Okay, let's see. Now, let me check over here. All right, I'll show these things next. Oh, let me take this off. I've been meaning to take it off. I don't know why I didn't so far. But I hate when they safety pin crap on. Okay, this is... 
a really cool afghan. It's like they made squares and then they sewed them together. And it is it is all um, uh, ducks. It's like every other one has ducks on it. I think it's so cool. And so it's just very, it's cream and brown with the colored ducks. And then it's got this real pretty edge on it. And it's big. It's really big. I mean, it's a regular big afghan. It's not like a lap one. And I thought that was cool. Oh. Would be really nice in the fall and winter, you know, when you're snuggling up watching Hallmark movies. Which, coming soon, they're having their Christmas in July uh, Hallmark movies. And so, of course, that's when we always do our Christmas in July sales. It's kind of neat. Um, this one is a homemade um, quilt. And it's quite faded. Um, I don't know if it was pastel to begin with. I'm going to guess it was. But it's a big one, too. And I believe I'm going to keep this one. Because it's just the right weight to couple, couple up yet, to cover up in the summer. So I got that stuff. Let's see what else we have. Uh, all right, we'll reach down. Well, I'll get this stuff out of the way first. Um, I might have shown this already, but it, it had gotten in the wrong pile, so I don't know if I did or not. But it is this, um, like a pale yellow picture. And it's got a sticker on the bottom, and I keep saying I'm going to see what it is, and then I don't bring the thing over here. So hold on a minute, and let me get my magnifying glass or something Okay, let me see what it says. Serenity, made in Japan. That's all I can read. It does have a little bit of crazing, but there are no cracks or chips. And uh, this would be a perfect size to put like syrup in, you know, for pancakes or put your milk in it for cereal in the morning. I think that'd be a perfect size. Alrighty, let's see here. I found one. One. A uranium glass uh, sherbet, you know, dish. Um, nothing is, no chips or cracks or anything. It's perfect condition, but it's federal glass because it's stamped with an F in the bottom. But I only found one. So I'll probably hang on to it and see if I can find any more somewhere else. So you'd have a set of them rather than just one. I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay. I found this uh, awesome picture in one of those. I don't know why the frames pivoted like that. And then it's got this, you know, foot to keep it from tipping over. But the gentleman is dressed very, very dapper, like he's got on a bow tie and whatnot. And he's got a mustache. 
And he's got that derby hat. So I would date this about the early 1900s. That's when that derby style was real, real popular. Early 1900s. Awesome picture. And then I got this nice big enamelware uh, basin. It's it's definitely been used. It's quite worn on the inside. It does have some little chips in it. It's got the hole where you can hang it up. I don't know if that's dirt or if it's just... Uh, I don't know what it is. I haven't wiped it yet or anything, so I don't know. But I love this enamelware stuff. I assume you guys do too. I don't know. Well, while I'm doing this, I'm going to show you this thing. Now, my mom and dad had one of these. My mom had a antique table that had a marble top. It was brown and it was in the um, window at our house. Had two antique setting chairs, on either, one on either side. And it had this beautiful lamp on it, which I now have in my bedroom. And it had one of these sitting on the um, on the table, you know, as an accent. This one is very dirty and needs to be clean. But um, I was reading up on these. These were like late 1900s stereoscopes. And it went. They, you know, people were still using them all the way up into the 1930s. But they started out, actually, I want to say the late 1800s through the 1930s. And, you know, you would look in it. And uh, so the picture would appear three-dimensional. I have really messed up eyes, so it, for me it doesn't. But And there's three of these... Uh, pictures, you know, whatever you want to call them, that went with it. Uh, there's that, one of two little girls. What are they doing? They're by a wishing, <laughs> yeah, they're by a well, and they're just sitting there. That one might be a boy. They're playing, I think. Yeah, the one might be a boy, I don't, can't tell. And then this one is like a commercially made one. Oh, well, maybe not, but it's of a... It says Americanized Indians. But this is the one I thought was so cool. This one says American Falls, Niagara from across the river. And this one says on the back, oh my gosh, this is cool. It says... Accept this stereoscopic view with our compliments. We take pleasure in handing you here with one of our celebrated colored stereoscopic views made for us by the latest photographic color process. To get any idea of the effect of depth, relief, distance, scopic, and color effect of the stereoscope view, your view, you must examine it through a stereoscope. Possibly you may have a stereoscope. And then, um, uh, let me see here. It's trying to sell these pictures. And it, it is a sample from one of the sets of beautiful photocolored stereoscopic views, which we sell at 85 cents per set of 100 views or 95 cents for the views together with the stereoscope. 95 cents for this and 100 viewer cards. Uh, let me see if it has any dates. If you will mention the special offer number 171D, we will make you these special prices. 
any two sets of views, $1.65. Any two sets of views with a stereoscope, $1.75. And it goes on and on and on. Uh, remember, you must mention this special offer, number 171D, as well as the catalog number to get the benefit of these special prices. Address. And this is written dollar fifty here. Sears Roebuck and Company, Chicago, Illinois, 171D. Sears and Roebuck. Okay, so we got that. Then there was this, I found this little black Americana baby on the beach. Look at his little butt. And he's sitting on the beach, or actually he's on a blanket. But he's got a bucket of water for some reason. He's probably on, at the beach on a towel or a blanket. And he's sucking his little pacifier. Yeah. Good morning, honey. I'm doing, I'm doing a video. Are you hauling? I'm hauling my haul. I'm trying. I didn't get to finish last night because Bandit would not uh, leave me alone long enough to do it. Oh, okay. Huh. So the next group of stuff is right here. I found these uh, carved wood swans which i've never seen them carved out of wood so i thought it was kind of cool it's a pair of swans says swans they're swans they're swans yeah they were done real very nicely i thought and then i got this little yarn thingy and the guy was trying to tell me how it was worth so much money I'm like yeah whatever didn't matter because he saw it. it has lots of snippets of yarn in here I see but it has a ball of yarn oh, and the premise of it was to put it through this hole and after you've rolled your ball of yarn into a, a ball and then you you know this way it doesn't get tangled and it's not rolling across the floor or anything i thought this was really cool and uh yes i actually got it for myself because i do i don't knit or crochet but i make uh, on a loom i make hats and i am always getting my yarns always rolling across the floor and then i got this old wooden um potato masher and uh i i can't wait to try it out i'm gonna wash it up and i'm gonna try it out see how it, how it works um i got this i don't know how old the item itself is but it's made from really old fabric and then it's got a lot of it looks like ink or something spilled on it on the back and there's a little bit on the front but it's some very old material and i i just love this thing i think it's so cool get these out of the way and then i got this very nice large um serving bowl. I mean, it's huge. That would make a big old bowl of mashed potatoes there. <laughs> Actually, I would. it would be like a big pasta bowl, I think. And it says, Ironstone China, hand-painted, oven, and craze-proof. And there is no crazing on it, but there is there is a slight I mean, a slight crack in the couple of them in the actual glaze. And because of that, it has discolored. But it's not, you know, even on this side. So it wouldn't hurt it to use it, but it did happen. Okay. Uh, 
Let's see what else we got over here. Let me get this yarn out of the way. I'll put it all in there. Um, I got this. This is in like almost brand new shape. There was there's very few fort marks on it. But this um Homer Laughlin uh Like a small platter restaurant wear platter. Very pretty. I think. I think it's pretty. Okay, now let me get this where I won't break it. And we have some stuff over here. Um, she must have collected or at least a few pieces. Um of black Americana. I, there was only a few pieces, so I don't know. But I grabbed what she had. So there's this little boy angel holding a lamb. And it looks... It doesn't have any markings. Um, I think it might be a home piece, but I don't know. It, it's done very nicely. I can't tell. So, But it's very nice. No markings at the bottom. And then there's this really pretty little, um, like a little bowl of some sort. Could be a candy dish. And it is, uh, well, it says hand painted. Other than that, I can't tell. Oh, it's Nippon. Nippon. So that is Nippon hand painted. I love all this stuff with the dark blue around the edges. I just think that makes it so stunning. I just love these colors together. And... We have this boy here, another black Americana. Uh, it was made in 1971. It says, Flyron. Evron, Iron, I don't know. V I O C O, V O Company, uh, 1971. It says Sunday chores. And all I see is a bucket. I guess Sunday chores was he had to do something with a bucket. But I love this one. He's just so cute. Such a sweet little boy. So I got that. Haven't had a chance to look up any of this stuff, really. And then I got a uh, set of the little kissing angels. I love those. I already have a set. Or I would keep them, but I have a set. All right. That's all I... Nope. One more thing right here. Then there's this little, uh, like, aluminum bucket. And it's got all kinds of uh, buttons in it. And it's kind of weird because they're all greens and reds. So I don't know if she was working on some kind of a Christmas themed project. I don't know. You know, they're all on the cards like that. In this here, in this little bag. And then there's uh, a lot of things. This is a little bit of uh, embroidery floss button. 
and then this is this looks like something that it went with on a sweater and you know it's an extra button that you get and some thread in case you lose your button I keep all those myself just those random buttons this is a a shaver and shaving cream I don't know old rubber band these are kind of cool these little these will be good for crafting um, this looks like something that I would have it's got like a bunch of random screws which if I find them I put them all together and I keep them in case they belong to something and uh, just some more little snippets of yarn this just looks like the catch-all bucket that you have in your house yeah they were selling that and they were acting like it was you know something really valuable it's valuable I could clean off the top of my dryer every week and sell that it's valuable all righty let's see all right i got there weren't a lot of linens i i think on another haul i showed a dish towel or something um this needs to be washed it's very dirty but it is a doily i i liked the doily i thought it was a pretty one and uh then there was this cotton dish towel, which these are the best dish towels in the world. I've been able to find them, actually. I was shocked lately. I've been able to find quite a few of them. Okay, now we got us a bowl here. I'm going to do this. Oh. there is this bowl right here and uh it's very pretty man i should get a little closer it's got fruit on it and, or vegetables i guess oh, there's a tomato an apple a peach some turnips and it is marked on the bottom. Regular U.S. Patent Office. Patent number. Uh, Cook Right. Economy. Cooking Wear. Health. A really nice bowl. In very good shape. So, I shall put this down. Because these bowls are heavy. And then I got this picture here. Uh, the frame isn't really old, I don't think. Um, it's older, but not real old. It's not ancient old. Uh, but it's got this picture of these. Like a family. No man. No man is in it, but just the rest of the family. I'm trying to get it where it won't. I'd say the 1800s. Well, for sure the 1800s. Picture. And then I got these. Or I got this one. She had several of these, and I bought... I think I bought them all. I don't know where the other ones went to, though. Well, I have this one, and it is a little sampler. Um, it says, Sarah, age 7, 1890. Remember me. Um, and it's not old. 
it looks old, but it's not. It's just a reproduction. But I, I just love these things, and I just thought it was kind of cool. Uh, I have, I don't know where the other ones went to. That's odd, because I, I bought like three of them. Huh. Hard to tell. And then I got these pictures, which um, they look like a watercolor background. And then they're a silhouette. Uh, and they're nice little frames. They are Amish pictures. This one here. And then this one here. And I thought these were very pretty. I, I love Amish stuff. Um, I just thought these were real pretty. So anyway, I did have like, which I don't know what happened to them, two other samplers that are bigger. Uh, huh. I'm puzzled now. All right. Maybe they're in this box. I don't know. Um, I got this blue, I would say it's a fruit bowl or a, uh, be nice you could make trifle in this bowl because you could see it but i'd say it's a fruit bowl and i don't know who made it but it is a uh, nice pretty blue paula might like this one i don't know i don't know if she likes all blue or just certain blues but that's definitely blue And I got this. This is graniteware. I finally found a graniteware piece. It looks like a plate that it, they would have had, you know, and plates that they, they had in their Conestoga wagon and they'd eat out of them. It's got some definite wear. They Everything like this just chips. You know, you're banging them around and they chip pretty easily. Well... They were being dragged around. They'd be chipping. But anyway, it is a, a graniteware plate. And then there's this little rag doll. Yeah, I wanted to show you here. Let's see if I can put these down for a minute. It even has, uh, it was made from a pattern, obviously, but it's got little underwear on it and everything. I thought that was cute. Again, something that'd be cute just to put on a shelf, you know, amongst other things, put it on a tiered tray. Very cute. And then I got this plate. There's two of them, of course. One of them got chipped on the way home because I wasn't chipped when I bought it. There's the chip on this one. But it, it is a beautiful plate. It has a bird on it. It says swallow. And it tells about the swallow. And then it has a strawberry, a wild strawberry plant on it. And it says a thousand wildflowers Round them shall unfold. The green buds glisten in the dews of spring. And all be vernal rapture as of old. S. Cabell? Oh, I didn't, I didn't start at the beginning. It says, soon over their heads, blithe April airs shall sing. And then it goes on. So it's this plate which I think is so cool. And it's Noritake, Ireland. Um, the Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady. 
That's a date. Webb and Bauer Limited, 1977. So it must have been like, you know, maybe like decorative plates that they were manu that they made. So I think these are very, very cool. And would look nice hung up. The one with the chip, I guess, will go on my chippy sale. And then I got a jewel tea pitcher. When I was a kid, the jewel tea man used to come around selling stuff. And he sold dishes in this pattern right here. And I might have had other patterns, but this is the one you see most commonly. Paul's Superior, tested and approved by Roy. Nope, not Roy. It looks like Roy, but it's not Roy. Come on. Let's get the string out of the way. Mary Dunbar. Jewel Homemakers Institute Quality Kitchenware. And I just think this pattern is so pretty. And I was so excited. There were other pieces they, she, this lady had. But this was the only one that was in beautiful, pristine condition. And I just think, fine, I just love this thing. I think it's so pretty. Okay. And I have another sweet little dish. It looks almost like a paisley thingy. And it's a nice coloring. I love the colors of it. And it is made by Lefton. Um, it says left in China, hand painted 20127B. It's in beautiful shape. There's nothing wrong with it. And you can tell it's hand painted by the way it's, by the way it's made. There's gold all around the rim and it's all still there. Real nice. Real nice shape of this. And then this thing, it took me a few minutes to figure out what it was. It is a butter press. You would put your soft butter that you've churned in here until it, you know, and then you put it somewhere where it got cold. And then this thing, you could push it out. You know, you would push it out onto your, uh, onto your butter dish. And it made an imprint of a cow right there and it this is a depression glass now my mother told me they used to make she was born in 1932 and she said they would you know make butter and then put it on a you know in a dish or something so i thought that was super cool makes me want to make butter <laughs> And then there's this little black Americana angel. That's a label on the bottom. Torn off, half off. Oh, Mace is made in China. But it's a sweet little angel girl. Which I thought was very sweet. Well, I don't know what happened to the other... Oh, wait, never mind. There's still stuff behind me. Um, this picture's real cool. I'd say this is probably from the ooh, 20s. And it was taken by the Bortez or Bortz Art Studio from on Broadway in Gary, Indiana. This might have been part of their family that they were selling. Looks like they were having a gay old time partying because there's a couple of bottles that they're holding up. But they all look, one girl has a bathing suit on. They look pretty, uh, guys got on the girl's hats. Looks like they were having a party. All right, let me see. I'll put this one back. 
here. Okay, now. Oh, let me grab this. I got this um, red metal sleigh, which I thought was real neat. I haven't seen one like this that's, you know, so tall and upright. What I liked about it was if you had a, a Santa, um, an old time Santa, you could put in it. And it had four bottle burst trees. And uh, then it had this porcelain angel that came off of a, the top of a nativity, you know, the crash part of the nativity. It was glued on there. But yeah, an old um, an old world Santa in this would be really neat, I think. Okay. She had very little Christmas stuff. It was kind of weird. I'm guessing her family maybe took all that. I don't know. Now this, I think, is real cool. Uh, it's made from an old board off of something. I mean, it's very weathered. And uh, somebody had put this Santa on it. He's carrying a burlap bag on his back. And then they have Merry Christmas written on it. Very rustic. Off. This is one of the um, uh, samplers. It has the name David embroidered in the corner. It says 1854. And like I said, they're really not old. Um, but, you know, if you have that kind of stuff in your house, that would be really cool. I hadn't seen too many of these like this. So that's why I grabbed them. And then this one I actually thought was old at first. Because it's quite old. It's quite dirty and everything. But it is... Why I loved it was it's my daughter's name, Sarah Ann, 1836. But it came from the Country Home Collection. But I loved it because it was um, my daughter's name. My daughter's name. All right. And then, I think this is the last thing right here. And this is really cool. Somebody, uh, somebody uh, burned into a piece of, looks like a piece of plywood. I can't tell. Looks like a thin piece of wood. Um a train, a picture of a train, and you can see it through the trees and stuff. And I thought this was very cool. If you like tree or trees, if you like trains and stuff, this would be a neat picture to have. So yeah, so that is something I think is cool. And. That is the end of my haul, you guys. It is the end of the haul. I don't think I missed anything. I hope that you saw some things you liked. Um, some of this is not for sale. But I will, I will do a video tomorrow 
uh, on my table, I will put on the table all the things that are going to be for sale. So you'll know what to be looking for. Well, I hope you have a great day. It's still morning here, and um, I got lots to do, so I guess I better get going. So I love you guys very much, and uh, thank you for sticking by me. It's I've, I've had a rough few months. I really have. So I thank you for um, hanging in there with me. Even though, you know, I've been kind of here and there. Um, I would never do anything to cheat you guys. I mean, if you don't get your stuff right away and whatnot, it's not that I'm trying to cheat you out of anything. It's just, I just wasn't well. So I hope you'll understand that and you will stick by me and you will continue to come to my sales and not judge me by my randomness sometimes. And, uh, yeah. So have a good day. Remember I am thinking about you and I will see you tomorrow night at my sale. Bye guys. <laughs>